In this video, we will build and try out this 3D printed PEC test bench. This model was originally posted on printables, and there is also a video about it, which I will link in the description. It was designed for water cooling, so you could put radiators on the sides. I wanted to use it for air cooling, so I made a remix, which was just designing a new leg, which is not made for radiators. This new leg goes on all sides, except for the one where the power supply holder is located. Besides the new leg, the rest of the design is the same as the original. I will put the link to my remix in the description. But how well will this model work? This is what we will find out in this video. We will print, assemble and test to build a PC in it. Let's begin with the printing. Okay, so I got all the parts printed now and I think we're going to start with these ones. So let's put the other ones away. Now for these parts, I assume that uh, here you should use a threaded insert. Although I don't think it said that explicitly in the description of this model. But I have two different kinds of threaded inserts for M3. This one, which is from CNC Kitchen. I used this before in some of my models and it works very well. I also got this general one from AliExpress or wherever. And when I tried these here, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have assumed that they actually fit in these holes here because this one from CNC Kitchen, it just, it's too small. We can try it by doing this, putting it on a screw to not lose it in the hole. And you can see it's just the outer diameter of this is too small. So if you check the diameter of the hole here, so this is about 475 and the diameter of this insert. So you should go by the bottom part here, 3.9 something. So not a good fit. Now the other one, And that is better. It's not good because the hole is still too big. I wish the hole was too small then I can just drill it, but when it's too big, well, it's more difficult. So as you can see, it almost goes all the way in. So I'm a bit skeptical to putting in a soldering iron here because it probably will be just going too deep. So I'll try just press it in by using this. Yeah, that goes all the way in like that. So trying to melt it in here, it will go too deep. I mean, it works like this. Will it stay in there? Maybe. Uh, actually, it's quite strong like that. Maybe we can just press fit them right in there. Okay, so let's, let's try and just press it in even harder here. So put a lot of force on that now. And will it stay in there? Yeah. Probably. So let's just press fit them in there. Okay, so now we have this part and I guess here it's also meant to have inserts. So let's try putting some inserts in there. See what happens. Yeah, and these holes are also too large, but there's a obstruction down there from from this bar going here you can see it here so they don't go in all the way so here I'll try to heat insert them here okay since this is ABS plastic we want to put the temperature to around 265 this is 250 so this would be 275 maybe around here let's try one Yeah, so now it's flat in there. That's quite nice. I guess that will work if the screw is not too long. I'm not sure what the computer screws usually are. Maybe they're five. 
and uh, doesn't go all the way in for five. These other inserts are taller, so maybe I'll try one of those. This will give us more threads if this works, so let's try that. Yeah, so it went through on the other side here, but that's okay. I guess this is better than Let's use the longer ones for this then. So now that's done. Got all of them in there. So got a computer screw out to try. I would say this is kind of regular sized screw. Uh, let's try it in the short insert here. See how deep it goes. Basically goes all the way in, but yeah, so that will work too. So now we're going to assemble all of this. And this is like a four piece puzzle here. Let's see if we can solve it. Which way should they go? So this one has two, probably be here now. Okay. This one then? Yeah, okay. And then maybe like, like that. Wow. Solved it. Okay. So once we have it like this, we can kind of turn it over, I guess. Because it's on the back side, you have these mounting indentions, and we have these printed. Three of the pieces are longer, and three of the pieces are shorter. Okay, and then the long ones. Okay, let's see if we can put this together. Like that. Like that. This is a bit tricky with the last part. Yeah, well, it's fine. Okay, so we've got all of that together. And uh, this is, you know, it's not held together like that. You could glue it in here to get it more stable, but I like that you can disassemble it and put it in a box. So I think I will keep it like this because once you put the other pieces here, it will stabilize. So this is for the power supply. So you're supposed to slide this in. So let's try it. Okay. Yeah. And these are the ones that I designed. What's interesting, I printed some of these pieces with support here and some without support here. And I guess if you print without support, maybe it will hold it in better because then you get a little bit of sagging here and you get more friction from that. So maybe it's better to print without support. Okay, got it all together. And now let's see. So it's this end we have this one, like that. And probably we don't want the power supply to go on the same end as the rest of the connections. I'm not sure. Maybe we do want that. Hmm. No, I think I actually want it here. I want the power supply to go here. Maybe I'll be changed my mind, but for now we will put it here. So I will just remove this leg here. And we'll remove this one, put it here. This is also something that's nice about this design. You can decide where you want the power supply. I also designed these legs with holes here, so you can put accessories here. I saw that the, the legs that were in the original model were, were done like this, so I just made the same holes. Maybe you can have like a fan holder or something here. Okay, so that's assembled now then. Waha! Oh! <laughs> right. Would be beneficial to have some kind of locking mechanism for these, I think. Like a little notch or whatever. Just something to keep them from falling out this easily. Because now it will fall out like that. And as I said before, if I had printed it with, with, uh, without support here, maybe this sagging would be worse. And then this friction fit would be better. But yeah, if I redesign this, I would probably put some kind of notch to just keep stuff in place. But all in all, that's kind of nice. So let's try and 
build a PC in this one. So I found some PC parts that we can use uh, to try and build in this test bench. So first we have the power supply here. Let's try to get it fitted. So, uh, we can see a problem here. So it's not quite fitting here. So the, the, this plastic is covering the power socket here. So we need to remove some material here. So I managed to remove some plastic over here. Let's see if it fits better now. Yeah, that's a lot nicer. So let's see if we can get it screwed in now. Okay, so I had to fight with it a little bit to get all the screws in. I think you can probably extend the holes a little bit upwards or at the sideways to give a little more tolerance because the holes might not be exactly where you want them to be. But anyway, now it's mounted. So let's attach it to the test bench. And there we go. Now it's attached. Actually, I think I changed my mind on the placement on this one. I want it here now with all the other cabling that will come out here. So I will move it over here. Okay, there we go. So now let's try and fit the motherboard. Okay, so I got the motherboard fitted. It fits quite nice, considering how you can sometimes get different dimensions when you 3D print. I think the dimensions here was quite okay. Quite easy to get it to fit. And now let's try the graphic card. Whoops. So let's connect the power. We got one power connector over here. Then we have another one over here. Okay. So now that we have that, we need power. And we will get a screen and try to boot the computer. Now we'll turn on the computer and let's see. Yeah, it's booting up here. So that's nice. So this all works out. I think it's quite nice. The fact that you have the power supply under here makes it a bit more compact, I would say. Let's try and lift it and see what happens. Yeah, no problem. At least with this computer. This doesn't have a huge graphics card or yeah, the CPU cooler is quite large, but yeah, there's no problem to lift it. And the problem I had before was the power supply holder was falling out. And now that the power supply is in, it's so heavy, so there's no problem with that anymore. And yeah, you can move it around all you want. So let's disconnect this and take a closer look at the test bench. Let's conclude with some final thoughts on this 3D printed test bench. Overall, it works well, but there are a few things that could be improved. First, the side legs could be using a locking mechanism to keep them from falling out when the bench is empty. Once you add the power supply and motherboard, the weight helps hold everything together. Second, the way the main parts fits together could be redesigned instead of relying on small connector pieces. The main parts could interlock directly by having integrated protrusions and holes. That would likely improve strength and simplify assembly. Third, the design could be optimized to use less filament. It's very sturdy as is, but probably could be made sturdy enough with less filament. And finally, the power supply cage. It's functional, but it doesn't fit all PSUs. As you saw, mine needed a bit of modification. Still, for a first version, it's absolutely usable and I'll likely use it for future builds. And if I find the time, I may make some improvements. Anyway, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing. It really helps the channel. And now YouTube thinks you want to watch one of these suggested videos. So go ahead and click one and I'll see you there.